Hello cheapskaters, welcome back to my working kitchen in my home among the gum trees here in Australia. The meal plan has changed. There's nothing new in that. It may be written on the whiteboard on the fridge, but that does not necessarily mean that I stick to it. It does mean though that even if things get switched around, our grocery budget stays the same. And that's because everything I make uses ingredients from the pantry. So lasagna has been requested for tea tonight. I don't have any lasagnas in the freezer. That means I'm making one from scratch and one for the freezer. Because I see absolutely no reason to spend time cooking and messing up the kitchen for just one meal. Double up dinners are a fact of life in our house and in my kitchen, they just about rule. Now, I don't have any lasagna noodles either, so I will be making them too. Making your own pasta is so simple and I will be bringing you along so that you can see exactly how simple it is, how easy it is to make fresh lasagna right in your very own kitchen. But before we start the pasta, we need to get the sauces going for the lasagna. Now, I'm making one meat sauce, one white sauce. The meat sauce is just a simple version of my spag bowl sauce, pretty much. It's really easy. It's mince, TVP, onion, garlic, carrot, oregano, tomatoes, tomato paste, tomato soup. That's about it. It's pretty simple. Now, the mince is already done. Mm. I'm using a quart jar, but I've got TVP soaking down the end there, and the onion carrot and garlic are about to start cooking. I'm just going to chop them first in the food presser, food presser, food processor. While they're cooking down a little, I'll make the white sauce. Now, it's my way of making white sauce. It's certainly not traditional and there are going to be cooks out there that are cringing and screaming at me that I'm doing it wrong and it's not, not going to work. Well, I'm not doing it wrong and it does work. This is my way of making a cheesy white sauce for our lasagna and it works and it tastes good. So as far as I'm concerned, if a recipe uses pantry ingredients, if it's simple and easy and tastes great, it works. I don't fuss too much about the process. I don't have time to fuss about the process. I don't have time to be bothered with you know, making a roux and stirring in the milk, adding a bit more. I don't do it that way, you'll see. Once the white sauce is done, I'll go back and finish off the meat sauce and then we'll make the pasta. We'll assemble the um, lasagna and we'll be done. Really easy and I'm hoping really, really quickly. So anyway, let's just get started. Now, let me switch you down so you can see what I'm doing. That will always help, won't it? And then, da -da -da -da, I've got carrots. The onions are already in the food processor. Now, I'm going to mute you while I process because you do not need um, the noise of the food processor going cray cray in the background, do you? So give me just a moment and we'll do that. Um, ta -da -ta -da. Let me figure out how I'm going to do it. Onions are done. That was easy. Did you enjoy the silence? Sounds of silence. Now, I'm going to 
put them in the pan but before I do a little olive oil turn the heat on just a medium heat will be fine a little bit of olive oil and we'll get these veggies cooking Let's get the onions out of here. They're all nicely, finely chopped, can you see? Let's have a scrap them out. I will use this. Okay. I'm going to um, load the carrots into the food processor now. Let me put you down again so you'll be able to see what I'm doing. I'm getting better at this, aren't I? Because this is real life, folks. This is really my kitchen. This is really how I prepare lasagna. This is real life. Back over onto the food processor. Lid on. I'll mute you again so that you don't get um, so that you don't get blown away with the noise and we'll get going. All done. Now I'll show you. I like the carrot to be really, really fine. I like it to be really, really fine because it cooks faster, but it also cooks down and gives the what have I done? There we go. Gives the sauce a really sweet flavour without adding any sweetness to it, if that makes sense. So it can go into the pan too. Feeling. Pick up the blade, scrape off the blade. You can't see me doing that, but that's what I'm doing. And can you hear the sizzle? Okay. Now, we've got that happening. While the, while the onion and the carrot are cooking down, and I will just keep giving them a bit of a stir every now and then. Oops, without getting it all over this cooktop. So I'm sweat them. I will start the white sauce for the pasta. White sauce is really simple. Again, it has to be simple or I don't do it, but it is plain flour, a little bit of plain flour, I have my plain flour canister here, just flour, and it's, oof, I knew I should put an apron on, about half a cup. Anyone else fussy about the way their lids go? I always like the branding to face the front. Some milk. Um, and a whisk. Okay. So I'm just going to whisk it, whisk the milk into the flour. Um, here it is. Whisk it into the flour. Just a little bit. So that until it's smooth, nice and smooth. And there's a little bit of flour on the board that can go in. Waste not want not flakes. Thank 
give these veggies a stir. I don't really want them to brown, I just want them to sweat. So, like that. Right, my secret ingredient is nutmeg. I think nutmeg is in this one. No, nutmeg's not in this one. Nutmeg's up here somewhere. You can put salt in. I don't add salt because I don't like salt. Give that a whisk. And it's quite thick. You can see that it's quite, quite thick. Give the veggies another stir. up nicely. I'm going to add some more milk to this. I'm going to add about two cups but I'm going to whisk it in a cup at a time just so there's no lumps because we don't want lumpy sauce do we? Nobody wants lumpy sauce. Don't put the lid on the milk, I'll knock it over you wait. So the lid is going straight back on the milk. And get the lid on the milk. Give it another whisk. I've got a bit of carrot in there, but nobody will know because there's carrot in the lasagna. It's only one little piece. Right. That's done. The easy part is done. Now we do the cooking. So it goes into the microwave, and I put it in the microwave for a minute and a half, and then I will whisk it. Put the milk away because we finished with it. And the nutmeg away because we finished with it. Check the veggies. And they look really, really good. So I'm going to add the herbs. Sorry, oregano. And garlic and I'm just using my garlic granules again where did I hold them I had them yesterday where did I hold them And in goes the TVP. Okay. 
okay, turn it down. Microwave has finished, so I will take the whisk and give the white sauce a quick stir. When you make sauces like this in the microwave, you need to be sure to stir every minute, minute and a half and get everything off the bottom because the bottom will thicken up first. So get everything off the bottom and make sure it's smooth. We don't want lumpy sauce. One minute this time. And it will be done. Right, now back to this. Why did I put the TVP in? I put the TVP in so that it would um, caramelise a little, pick up the flavours of the onion and the carrot and the garlic and the oregano and the olive oil. It just helps give it a better meatier texture. So we don't want it to brown as in go crispy and we don't want it to burn. So keep it moving. Oh, just let it get sort of a, let it pick up the flavour. Okay. Now I'm not going to chop anything else, am I? Nope. So I'll move all this over to the sink. And while I'm over there, I'll give the white sauce a stir. show you what it looks like. There it is. It's still quite liquidy on the top and that's fine. But you can feel the bottom is thickening. It thickens, it's quite chunky if you want to say that. So give it a good whisk. It's still, it's warm but it's not boiling hot yet. Back in. For a minute. And then we'll give the um, pan a stir. And I might even add the meat now. a little hint if you're using tvp once you've added it you need to keep stirring it will stick if you don't keep your eye on it because it doesn't have any natural fat it's not like um, beef or chicken or lamb or pork but it might have fat in it it has no natural fat of its own so don't let it stick now with this jar i'm about to open I do like having hand rates. There is some fluid in there, some water in there. There's also a bit of a fat cap. That's fine. I'm actually going to tip that in. Now, I don't normally like fat in my food. This meat was boiled and well drained and well rinsed, and it still has fat in it. And I was a bit disappointed because it wasn't, well, it wasn't expensive, but it wasn't exactly cheap. But anyway. It is what it is. We will just use it. Okay. Stir it in and then the microwave went ding again. A minute it goes fast, doesn't it? So I'll get the um, white sauce out and give it another whisk. can see how it's thickening up. Let's see if we can see how it's thickening up. I should just leave the whisk over here, shouldn't I? Because, um, oh, I can feel it now. See, I can't get quite, it's heavier at the bottom. That's what we want. It means it's thickening. It's doing its job. It's turning into a nice sauce. 
Okay. So when it's like that, you have to give it a really good whisk. You want it to be smooth. You want the whole thing to be silky smooth. So I give it a really good whisk. Can't stress the whisking enough if you make your white sauce my way. And I do it like this, guys, because I get sidetracked. As you can see, I'm always going backwards and forwards between different things. I don't just do one thing at a time. I do have two or three things going at once. Back to stirring this. Good mix through. Now that fat cap wasn't here, wasn't a lot of fat. It will add flavour to the sauce, to the meat sauce though. And using TVP, that will really help. Now, all we have to do for this now is add the tomatoes. Get the water. I'm just using tin tomatoes, tin diced tomatoes. I don't have any home canned ones, so tin will do just fine. And it was a big tin. It was a 800 gram tin. Okay, give the sauce another stir. Whisk this down there. Now it's starting to get really lovely and thick. You can probably see how it's moving. It is starting to turn into white sauce. I am really happy. This is what it's supposed to do. And it's no longer big glug on the bottom. It's thick all the way through. Now, for lasagna, I like my white sauce to be almost stiff, if that makes sense. I don't like it running. I don't like it running. So you can see this is starting, a bit like when you're doing soap, it's starting to trace. So let's say another, maybe another minute, and it will be right to go. So back in the microwave. One more minute, which will give me time to get the tomato soup. Guys, I forgot the tomato paste. I knew there was something I had to put in. Here it is. Got it. Can I get it open? Oh, maybe not. Yes, I can. Just have to use the right hand, don't I? The tomato paste. Let's just scrape this jar out. It's nearly empty. So yummy. Stir that in. Tomato paste, not strictly necessary, just gives it a bit of a richness. If you've got little people that will be eating this, they may not like tomato paste. It might be too rich for them, so don't use it. Use what you have. Let's check the white sauce. Ah! We have white sauce. Yay! I'm going to bring it over because it's very hot. So I'm bring it over and put it on the um, trivet so it doesn't mark the bench. Okay, that's it. That's how I like it. See? So it doesn't, when you cut into the lasagna, you don't want the, the white sauce to go and run off. I like it nice and thick. Still going, just to give it a whisk. It is fairly smooth. Maybe there's a lump in there if I saw one. Okay. 
I'll be back to deal with this in just a minute. Let it cool a bit because I'm going to add a little bit of primer to it. Mm, but before I do that, I'm going to put the soup in the meat. And... Oh no. You've broken it, haven't you? The Juva Wacky What's It Puller thing is broke. Let's see if I can get it open with my handy dandy. Just can it. Ring pulls sound good in theory, but they don't always work. Yep. Did it open? I think so. Nope. Can I ask you to do that for me, please, while I deal with these ones? Carefully deal with these ones. Thank you, my darling. What do you have in lasagna when you have lasagna? Sometimes we will just have lasagna. It will just be the lasagna on a plate. Other times I might do chips or wedges or something. Um, tonight we're going to have it with salad. A little bit of salad to use up, so we're going to have lasagna and salad. Did it work, Ann? Nope. Could you get me another can and we'll fix that one later? Thank you, my sweetheart. This is why we have a well stocked pantry. Because when disasters happen, we don't need to panic. Right. right, can open. Disaster averted. Well stocked pantry. Two up rescue. Great for shopping. Great for shopping. Yep. The pantry. Yep. <laughs> oh, you know. It works. Everyone should have at least the basics in their pantry. You don't have to get them all at once, but keep enough to do a week or two. Keep enough in your pantry so that if you were to not get paid, you will be able to eat for that pay period. So if you get paid weekly, keep a, one, a week's um, stockpile. Fortnightly, two weeks. Monthly, a month's stockpile. Do that now. I'm just going to turn that down a bit and put my splattery thing on it so it doesn't splat tomato all over my kitchen. Get the parmesan out and stir it into this. Um, what's the bottle of cream, guys? Can't afford to waste the cream. Um, stir some parmesan into this just to give it a bit of a flavour and then we'll get started on the um, couple of tablespoons that's all you need um, then you get started on the pasta making the lasagna Here we go. So I'm just going to stir it in. I've just got the bowl sitting on the trivet because it's very hot. Stir that in. Oh, it smells so good. I never thought white sauce could smell so good. But see how nice and thick it is? It will firm up even more as it cooks. So, and as it's getting on towards dinner time, I need to get a rig along. Okay. Right, move that to the side for now. Put the oil away. Let's do some cleaning up so we can make some pasta. Um, put the cream back in the fridge. Move 
grated cheese that we have. Put the garlic away. Oh, and that can go away. All this tidying up we're doing. Oh, oh, oh. Forgotten. Mine's gone blank. Put the food processor away. We don't need that. So it can go away. Sauce is bubbling. Can you hear the sauce bubbling? I don't know whether you can pick that up or not. I'll give it a stir in a minute and turn it down a bit. We don't want it to bubble up too much. I'm going to let that cook down a bit. I want my sauce, sauce needs to be um, wet, it needs to be moist so that the pasta will cook, but I don't want it to be so runny, it's like a soup. Right, now, to make pasta easy peasy, you need plain flour, you need eggs, I am going to do, I think, I'm going to do as much as I can out of this container. So where's my cup, my measuring cup? Down here. Let me dry it. So I had milk in it. I don't want a wet cup going into my flour bin. Nice and dry, yes. So, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, four cups of flour, four cups of flour means four eggs. Now, I'm going to start with four eggs. I might need to put five in. It depends a lot on the flour, the weather, how humid it is. Working with flour, making pasta is working with flour. It's like everything. It really depends on the weather. If you're making a dough, it depends on the weather as to what you need to do. So... I'm going to crack my eggs into a bowl, but before I do that, I'm just going to use a spoon and I'm going to, I don't know if you can see me, make a sort of a well in the middle of the flour and put the eggs in there. And we'll crack the eggs in there and then I am going to use my mixer to make it make a well. I just tipped it all over. Sorry, guys. Um, I'm going to use my mixer with the dough hook to make the dough. Always crack your eggs into a bowl just so that you know they're fresh and that you can pull out any eggshell that gets left in there. There it goes. Oh, it's a thin shell. It's a nice big egg though. Okay. okay, they were all good. Those big shells can go to the garden. Right, eggs in with the flour. Let me bring, I'll put my mix over, I think, so that you can get a better idea, especially when I'm rolling the pasta, of what's actually happening. Okay. All right. Got 
have a lot of a kitchen that can be PowerPoint so that you can move things around. Whoops, turn you off. Okay. So let me flip you up again. Flip you down again. Let me do something. And we can see. I don't know whether you can see or not. What's going to be the best view for you? Okay, don't hook on the mixer. In it goes, bowl, bowl, go down. And just start it beating. Okay. I can get the camera any closer for you. I'll show you in just a moment what it turns out like. You can do this by hand if you don't have a mixer. Make a well with your eggs. Use your fingers to make the dough. Um, straight down the sides. It takes a few minutes. But it is well worth it. I'm also going to use my mixer to roll it. I'll use the attachment. The attachment on the mixer to roll it. Now, this is going to be another couple of seconds and I might add one more egg. Let's see how it goes, but I think I might add one more thing. fingers in. Yep, one more egg. It's not quite, not quite moist enough. I'm going to break that egg up. So let's put it on. Don't waste it. Eggs are too expensive to waste. When it's come together like a dough it needs to hold together so that when it goes through the rollers it will press and form together show you I squeeze it it actually holds its shape but let me just try one wee thing just not sure it's quite right not as hmm, not like I normally have it so now how 
how it holds nicely. That's what I want it to do. That's what I want it to do. So, turn it out. Here. Take the dough hook off. And replace it with the um, roller. It goes real life. This is what happens. This is like <laughs> when I decide at the last minute to record what we're having for tea. Okay. Let's try again, shall we? I had it, I had it round backwards is why it wouldn't work it was round backwards so there's my dough tear it apart and we cut each of these into three now depending on your recipe you might need more and flatten them just like so now you can't see um but I'll flip you up so you can because there's no fun if you can't see, is it? Machine has to go on too. Starting because this is going to, I'll go have to write it really, really thinly. Machine's on too, and I'm just going to put it through as best I can. Fold it over and put it through again. You'll, oh, I don't know whether really you'll be able to see so much, but it gets smoother with each pass through. Again. Depending on your dough, three or four times is usually enough on this pass through. Then we change it down to make it thinner. And we slide it through again. Again, it's so much easier when you've got the attachment in the right way. Such a deal sometimes. And again. Okay, and then down again. And you keep doing that until it is the thickness that you want your pasta to be. Now, this is the lasagna attachment, obviously. You can cut this into fettuccine if you want to. You can roll it into um, shells or whatever. When you're happy with it, move on to the next piece. Just lay it out. Oh, that's got holes in it. I am not happy with holes. That's holes in our lasagna, do we? Gets holes in it, I'm rolling it too thin. Okay. There's that. And we start again. And we put it through. 
hold it over and put it through. That's all we do. Okay. You can make your um, incredibly long strands of lasagna if you want to. Drop out, drop out, drop out. Thank you. Do it that way. You can do this with a rolling pin by hand. I mean, I'm blessed to have a machine that will do it for me but you know what lots of people for hundreds of thousands of years didn't so all right back down to number one okay. i stop at number three thickness for lasagna i find that's plenty thin enough thin enough to cook in the store um thick enough that you've got the texture which is what you want Hold it over and go through it again. Just keep passing it through just like this. So now you've seen me do this, this is going to take me a few minutes. So again, I'm going to turn you off. And come back when it's all done. We're back. And I got so excited with making the lasagna that I actually forgot to turn you back on. So here's ah, some of our dough. Let me, this will be for the next one, so let me move a whole bunch of stuff out of the way. And I will show you. Oop. Here we are so far. All I've done is, I'll take these. These are the lasagna sheets that I made. It's the dough. And I've just laid them like so, torn them off. Pop them on. Here's a nice skinny one over here that can just go there. And you'll understand now why I like the sauce to be a little bit, a little bit moist, moister. So that the fresh lasagna will soak it up and cook. All right. That can go there, like so. Right. Let me very gently, I can re-roll that in a minute. And I can re-roll that in a minute. Pop this over here for you. And I started with a layer of meat, a layer of um, pasta, a layer of meat, a layer of the white sauce. A layer of meat, layer of pasta dough. Now we're going to finish with the caramel on the top. And I am just going to, and then I will put um, cheese on it. Fresh lasagna does not take long to cook. Only a few minutes, probably. I will put this, oh, trust me, guys, what a day this has been. Do not think. Oh, the days, my days are perfect, let me tell you. There are days, it's just crazy today. I know what it is, we've got visitors this weekend and I'm trying to do this and I didn't really plan it out, it was sort of a spontaneous video because, you know, why make life easy? And um, 
then we're busy all weekend because it's you know train exhibitions and things happening okay that's that i have a little bit of parmesan on the top just a little bit and then some um, grated cheese just the Whatever it is, coals, shredded cheddar, tasty cheddar. There we go. So a little bit on the top. And this will go into the oven for 30, 35 minutes. I do have the oven on preheating. And, and during that time, I'll set the table, make the salad. And clean up. Reroll this dough and put the other put the other lasagna together. I won't drag you along for that. That would be just too painful after this experience, wouldn't it? So there you go. <laughs> That's a spontaneous lasagna, homemade. Did you use all pantry ingredients? Once I got the duh in my head and figured out that I had the pasta attachment on upside down, that helped. Don't know why the pasta, the flour, was as dry as it um, seemed to be. It's not so bad. It's got lots of elasticity in, in it. So... Maybe, just maybe, I'll rewind, I'll re-roll that. Um, it was the brand, I can't tell you what brand it was because I don't know, because I buy whatever's cheapest. But pasta really is easy, really, really is easy to do. This lasagna, I will easily get 10 or 12 serves out of it, depending on how hungry the hordes are when they get home. They've been working hard all day. They would probably be starving. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. If you lasted this long, you deserve a medal. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. Please, please give me a thumbs up. I really, really appreciate it. But this is real life in my kitchen. This is how life turns out for me every single day. Okay, thanks again. If you're not a subscriber, oh, I was about to say, if you're not a subscriber, I would be honoured if you'd subscribe to our channel. If you want to know more about the Cheapskates Club, there is a link below me. If you need to contact me, there is a link below. And if you have any questions, just put them in the comments. I read all the comments. I do my best to answer any questions. And I will be back very, very soon, hopefully, with a video that's not nearly as chaotic as this one. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Until then, happy Cheapskating, folks.